It's puck time, and yes, I'm back, baby. Can you see the raccoon? Can you see the raccoon, the goggle eyes from uh, wearing goggles and tanning on the chair? <laughs> yeah, it, it is noticeable. I was in Utah, three days of skiing, Park City. Oh, my God. It was unbelievable. Like, Check the weather reports. Man, I mean, it snowed at night. It was a bluebird, sunny day. Uh, for normal human beings, it was six degrees I don't know what the hell that is in Americanese, but uh, mm -hmm. it was six degrees for the rest of the world. Jeez, uh, I mean, it was magic. And I went on a four and one hockey run while away. I went on a four and O oh hockey run, and then I idiotically released the over in the Winnipeg Calgary game on Saturday. Uh, so yeah, I'm on a four and one hockey run. I do want to talk college hoops, uh, really quick, but Alex, how are you? Uh, I'm doing way better now than I was this weekend. I did not have as magical of a weekend as you did. Uh, but now I'm, I'm doing fine, getting ready for the, the stretch run. Like I said, college hoops time is here now too, as well. So, uh, definitely worth, uh, you know, getting ready for, but hockey, this is a good time for hockey as well too. You can't forget about it completely because the bookmakers are forgetting about it. So we might get some good lines, especially looking at tomorrow's lines already up. There's some juicy prices. So definitely want to take advantage of, uh, of some of these weaker spots while the books are worried about hoops. It's a great point. Uh, Andrew, what's going on with you, dude? Your hair is a little uh, off to the side. Yeah, Prez, life's really good, man. I'm doing really good. Uh, NHL has been great these days. Looking forward to the playoffs. Saw some great pictures of you skiing. Uh, I heard you're a pro, Prez. Uh, that's pretty good news. I, I, I figured you'd be one to talk yourself up, but to actually hear that you're pretty good, I, I'm happy for it. I'm, I'm happy you had a good time. Alex, I'll go out on a limb and say that there is no – Andrew, I mean – uh, there is no sport that you do that you're better at than I am a skier. Hmm. Uh, you know, since you're the, the one that pays me press, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Well, I'm as, I'm as good a skier as you can get. I mean, I can do 20 foot drops. I can do cliff work. Uh, I can ski wow. on steeps where if you fall, you plummet for 500 feet uh, there's pretty much nothing I can't do. I've never seen a hill I can't ski down, but I can't stand the cold. What about snowboarding, Fred? <laughs> I, I, I can. I, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I'm just not good enough. So, you know, I tend to go... If, if I'm heading up to ski in Ontario, where I'm skiing 700 feet of vertical, I'll snowboard. But if right. I'm going to a proper mountain, I'm just... Right. I'm not good enough. It, it, it ruins my day. Uh, Alex, we have never discussed your athletic prowess. <laughs> uh, well, I played baseball for a while in high school. That's not hurt. a sport, Alex. That's a game. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. All right. Well, I mean, then that, that's about well, it. Hold, really on, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's say you're in right field. Uh -huh. It's the start of the inning. It's oh, two, I've heard this one. It's 2-1. Seventh inning, could you technically pull out a cigarette and have a smoke? Sure, yeah, you probably could, yeah. Well, I mean, surely one of the <laughs> definitions of a sport is you can't eat pizza and have a smoke while in the middle of the game. True, but Prez, I was I, I was I'm five ten, and I was, back then I weighed about three hundred pounds, so it was the perfect sport for me to just kind of stand around. I pitched, so I was constantly moving. But I mean, hey, that 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 was right up my alley. <laughs> well, had you pulled out a cigarette and smoked, you would have gone from three ten to two ten. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that. Yeah, one. but yeah, uh, baseball. Uh, you know, and the thing about it is, people who like baseball think when I say it's not a sport, it's a game. They think I'm insulting it. That's not true. You know, poker's no, get, a game. Golf's a yeah. game. Yeah. Golf's Bowling. a game. I bowled, I bowled in high school. That, that's yeah. not a sport. Very that's difficult. a game. Yeah. Very difficult. You know, don't get us wrong, but yeah. it's just different. You know, it's the stop and go kind of game in comparison to like hockey, basketball, football. Well, uh, then again, and hey, Prez, then again, if you love football so much, there's a lot of stopping and starting. Too, yeah, though. but I mean, look, you look. can't light a cigarette, but yeah, you can't. And that's my definition. You can't smoke <laughs> okay, okay. a cigarette while playing football. <laughs> and let's be honest here. Those offensive linemen and de those defensive ends, etc., 
I mean, we're we're talking about three three fifty. Some of them ballet dancers, their agility is so ridiculous. Yeah, right? yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely changed from like forty years ago. These guys are just you know big old construction workers pushing each other around. They're they're, they're true athletes now. So. Yeah. Uh, five minutes in, we haven't spoken about a damn thing. Uh, <laughs> flat out, guys, I got a promo to give you. It's a college basketball one. You know, you listen to me every day. You listen to me talk about football. I mean, talk about hockey. You see my NFL football show every week, the most watched, uh, consistently most watched show at Wager Talk. Uh, you know Andrew does some hoops. You know Alex does hoops in football. Uh, what you don't know is how good I am in basketball because I don't discuss it. And I, and I, you know, on Morning Joe and the Pro, I tend to ask the guests about their opinions on games and really try to make them look like, you know, the great handicappers that they are. And on this show, it's hockey, hockey, and hockey. But I mean, look, I'm on a 7-1 and one NBA run. I'm over 60% in NBA. I'm killing it in college basketball. Guys, I am 60% in college basketball in the last 13 calendar months. Uh, last March, I went 18-7. and 18-7 and seven during the madness. That's 72%. Uh, I don't, I don't talk about it, uh, but I want you guys to understand there are not many people better than me in college hoops. Uh, so buy my college basketball from now today, this moment, the, 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 all of the tournaments, um, right to the championship game, $125. Use the promo code CBB125. And... If you listen to Morning Joe and the Pro, that's all you got. But if you're listening to Puck Time, make that purchase and email missy at wagertalk.com and I'll throw in the next seven days of NHL on the house. 125, 125 for college hoops right till the end. CBB125 and email missy and grab a week of my NHL. Uh, boys... Let's get to it. Uh, yeah. Before we get to it, let me tell you guys. Email Missy for promos. Like, you know, you guys are on the show every day. Alex, you are literally like my freaking co-host. Right. If, if you want a promotion for your to give out to the customers, email Missy at Wager Talk and ask her. Tell her. You don't even need to ask. Just tell her. Missy, 35 bucks for a week of my NHL. Email me a coupon code because okay. I can't remember all the time. Anyway, <laughs> it's good to be back, boys. Uh, coyotes. Uh, snuck into the wild card spot. Uh, nobody would expect that. Um, really playing decent hockey. Uh, on the road tonight, though, facing Tampa Bay. Uh, it's gonna it's just it's gonna be tough. I mean, look, they've won four of their last six games. Uh, but nobody wants to play against Tampa Bay. They've won four in a row, six of their last seven, and they're putting up a ton of goals, six against Washington, five against Detroit. They utterly dominated Toronto, uh, put up a six spot against them. Uh, and Arizona, you know, Arizona, the, the problem with the Arizona totals right now, and Alex, we'll go to you first, is it's one, one game and eight the next, uh, there's very little consistency. The over and under here is six and a half plus 105. Uh, the money line is Tampa Bay minus 290 with a spread of minus one and a half, 105. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to take Tampa Bay at minus one and a half in this game, uh, but it seems like the only available bet. Well, the narrative, and we've been saying it for a while, we're going to probably say it until the playoffs started with Tampa Bay, is that uh, picking the spots where they have, uh, you know, where they want to play, you know, and, and, and want to win this game. And we've seen that already in a couple of games. Of course, they wanted to show up against Toronto, uh, another playoff team. Detroit, it's interesting. We've seen them play t Detroit twice, won both games with just by one goal. Yeah. So it seems like the Red Wings just give them a, 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 a tough matchup. Uh, they beat Washington, another playoff team, and a team that they've gone back and forth with for years. Do they have, uh, you know, will they be, you know, geared up for this game is the question. Arizona, obviously, they're going to be geared up for every single game, uh, and they know that Tampa Bay is the best team in the league. 
you know, the motivation, I don't know if it's going to be there for the Lightning here. I'm, I would lean with Arizona at this big of a price because they have something to play for. Uh, like I said, but going against Tampa Bay is never a good idea uh, yeah. more often than not. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can't. Uh, I would lean with Arizona. But. I, I can't bet this game. You know, I mean, uh, if a gun was to my head, I would take the minus one and a half and hope for an empty netter. But the bottom line is, and you make a really good point about which games Tampa Bay is going to get up for and, and not. And, uh, you know, from my perspective, and I think you see this, uh, they're going to get up if they play Boston. They're going to get up Washington. They beat them 6-3. They were up against Toronto on the road, whooped them 6-2. Uh, and then they play Detroit and win by one goal. They lose to Minnesota. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to jump on the Tampa Bay bandwagon right now until the end of the season before the playoffs start, Wait until they're playing good teams. Uh, Andrew, uh, any quick thoughts on this game? I've been quite interested with the fact that Tampa Bay has been continuing to roll. They haven't really let the foot off the gas pedal whatsoever, like you guys both mentioned. And as far as totals go, I really thought they would start to trend a little more under, and it hasn't gone like that whatsoever. They've continued to be involved in high-scoring games. And guys, the reason for that, in my opinion, is that they really just kind of make other teams fall into that style of play. It's like, hey, we're playing the Tampa Bay Light and we want to shut them down defensively, but it seems the only way we can beat them or try and contend is to play their style, and, you know, play a fast-paced game. You know, you don't see a lot of whistles in Tampa Bay games. You, you don't see a lot of breaks. Those games are end-to-end -end action, lots of shots. And, and this Arizona team, it's like you said, Prez, it's hard to get a read on them total-wise, but the stats here kind of are in our favor. Total's gone over in nine of Arizona's last 13 against Tampa Bay, nine of the last 12 on the road in Tampa Bay. And, you know, 6-3 against Washington, 5-4 against Detroit, 6-2 against Toronto, like you said. Those are some good numbers for a team that's pretty secure in their playoff spot. So that means a lot to me. You know, a team like that could just sit back and say, hey, we're good till the playoffs. We're all right. We're laughing. But Arizona will come in there. I think they score some goals as well. And they got a few injuries as well. So <coughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say the over 6.5 at a plus 105 price press. Yeah, not, not a bad play, Andrew. Uh, the only thing that worries me on that over, and it's why I didn't release it to my clients, is uh, Arizona is playing good defense right now, and they are holding teams down. Uh, Western Conference, uh, Andrew, we'll go to you first. Chicago, only five points out of a playoff position, which is crazy given how they started the season. Uh, they even have a game in hand on both Arizona and Dallas and Colorado, and two games in hand against Minnesota. This is a massive game for them tonight. I mean, I, I feel like at home against a team like Vancouver, who are not playing well, uh, I think this is their season, to be honest with you. Uh, we got a minus 240 money line uh, on Chicago. I certainly can't take that. Uh, the spread is minus one and a half at plus 105. Uh, again, tough to take that. You know, my play is on the over in this game. Uh, I think it is going to be high scoring, even with uh, Vancouver not putting up a lot of points. And the bottom line here is a lot of goals, Vancouver. Uh, the bottom line here, Andrew, is Chicago's been going over nonstop all year. And you know, they went under against Dallas 2-1. I came back with the over again against Arizona. I came back with the over against Toronto. And now they've gone under after beating Montreal and putting them out of the playoffs. It's time to get back on the over train with Chicago. Uh, Andrew, what do you think in this game? Perez, I was this close to saying to you, I appreciate you not mentioning my halves. And right before I spoke, you, I, I, got, I love it. I love it. I love the back and forth. I was very disappointed in that. Luckily, from a betting perspective, I had the under in that game. For me, looking at this one, I got to go with the under two and a half team total goals for Vancouver. I could definitely understand where you're coming from, Prez, with the over. Chicago's been putting up an excellent amount of goals, and they really have been playing some outstanding hockey. But Vancouver playing teams like Dallas, New Jersey, New York, and still going under the total, those are really crappy teams, and they still can't pile up the goals. Uh, they've got injuries right now at the forward position in the wing. Uh, it's not really helping them out whatsoever. This is a time of the year where you want your youth to show. You want you know these guys from Vancouver to be able to still give it their effort. If I'm a head coach for a team, we play 82 games. I don't care where we are in the standings. We play 82 games. I just don't see that fight from Vancouver. And the way that they 
you know, I know everyone can say whatever they want about Montreal's offense, but that was a desperate team in that game and an outstanding job by Corey Crawford and Nets. And Chicago played a great defensive match. So I'm going to look at Vancouver under two and a half team total goals for this game. Uh, Alex, Chicago on a five game win streak, three of them on the road, one of them against the Leafs uh, and against a desperate Habs team. Uh, can you lay minus 240 here or the spread? Or, I mean, is there anything on the on the li- line in this game? Isn't it interesting? My Blackhawks beat your Leafs and your Habs. It's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's really though, not that funny, although I much enjoyed them beating the Habs. But both games were excellent to watch. But uh, the over, I mean, that's the only thing you can look at here with the Hawks. 24 of the last 27 games have gone over. The last eight meetings between these two teams have gone over. He like said, Vancouver, the one thing that worries me is that where the hell is their offense going to come from? Like he said, uh, you know, they, they're scoring three goals or less in eight of the last ten games. Uh, but they're letting in a bunch of goals. Chris Tanev is out. That's another key defenseman they're missing. Uh, like I said, these young guys, they just aren't playing like, uh, you know, they're playing waiting for the summer to start, basically. So Hawks have won eight of the last 11 at home. That home crowd's going to be rocking. Uh, you know, people starting to, you know, buy into some hope. I, my parents were the ones who were the whole time saying, oh, the Hawks are still in. The Hawks are still in. I'm like, nah, this season, season's pretty much over with. Hawks are really right in the thick of things still with a couple weeks left. Uh, so it's going like to be Hawks. tough. I like the over. It's going to be, be tough. tough. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, of they've course. got, they've got three, three teams. they got to jump three teams. And, you know, I mean, Arizona's playing so good. You know, they beat I, Arizona. They beat Dallas. They beat Minnesota. They beat Minnesota. Handled them. So all the teams that are, that are in front of them that are around with them, Colorado, they played Colorado well. They've done well against those teams, and they, they got a couple matchups with some of those teams left, too. So they could jump over them easily. But uh, like I said, oh, the over six and a half, and you're laying a little bit of juice, 135, 140. That's the only thing look worth playing in that game. I'm with you. Uh, late breaking news. Oh. We just got this on the wire. Uh, Associated Press just put it out. I saw it on CNN. Breaking oh, news. Man. Andrew McGinnis has a 5% NBA play up tonight at sportsmemo.com. And it's nine dollar Monday, so you can nice. get that play for nine bucks. Uh, Andrew, you've been you've been doing well in NBA, right? I mean, well, that's the funny thing with the NBA. I've been a lot lower volume with it, but I still do follow it every single night. It's one of those sports for me where I think it's better to stay lower volume and really select your spots. Uh, steadily hitting sixty percent in the season, uh, doing a lot better with sides. But uh, NBA has been great, especially around this time of year. Certain teams want it a lot more than others, and. Uh, I've got a 5% play I'm loving tonight. $9 Monday, folks. Best day to go to sportsmemo.com. I, I, $9 Mondays are the best way to start your week, realistically, if you're looking for a good pick. Yeah. Alex, what, what shirt are you wearing? This is uh, the East Carolina uh, University Hockey Club. They sent me this jersey. You know, East Carolina, the, the Division One school. Sponsorship, <laughs> Alex? No, this is a couple years ago. I donated some money to them, and they sent me this nice jersey. It's got my name on the back, number 69, of course, the number I, I wore when I played baseball. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I wear I, no, I, I wear number ninety seven, and I, I've been wearing it before Connor. Uh, oh, no. But if I could go back and do it all over again, I would go as number sixty eight. <laughs> Why sixty eight? It's the best sexual position. Oh, okay. It, have you guys seen Have you guys seen the movie Goon? Oh, it's yeah. amazing. Oh yeah, the guy's buddies <laughs> in the stands. He just goes. Pick 69, pick 69. He's just yelling. (laughs) Well, do you want to know why 68 is the best sexual position? Because you're old one later? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But I'm not the one that's owed. (laughs) Fair enough. You're you're old or you're owed? (laughs) Winnipeg Jets, minus 180 against the LA Kings. (laughs) Uh, Winnipeg's won their last two games in a row. I bet them against Boston, uh, and I also took the over in that. I went 2-0 and for my clients, uh, and I screwed up in Calgary. I liked Winnipeg, but I liked the over more, and it ended up being a 2-1 game. I just felt like Calgary was going to be able to put some points up. Uh, LA Kings were doing well uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, they've <laughs> lost their last two games, uh, five of their last six. Uh, Korolev or Kovalchuk or whatever the hell his name is, ruining ruining the team he decided to join. Uh, over and under in this game is six plus one hundred. 
I'm 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 staying completely away from this hockey game. Uh, Andrew, we'll go to you first. I'll keep it short, Prez. I locked in uh, the Jets in regulation minus one hundred and nine. Uh, they proved to us over the nice past two, over their past two games they could beat great teams like Boston, like Calgary, and without three key pieces, Bufflin, Morrow, and Morrissey, and that's been key for them. And without guys like Line and certain guys like Little not stepping up. The depth has really shown recently for Winnipeg. I've liked it a lot, and I hate L.A. I don't know if I've ever told you that, Prez. L.A. is one of the teams that I hate the most. They're slow. They're boring to watch. I think Winnipeg, if you look at them, they're actually one of the biggest teams size-wise, yeah. you know, throughout their entire and lineup fast. and the whole team. Exactly. So, you know, L.A.'s style of play, trying to be tough and grind, doesn't really work against Winnipeg because they have both the skill and the yeah. size. Nor San Jose. It's funny. Both those teams, although Winnipeg is a much faster team than San Jose. But I mean, if you want to talk about a perfect, you know, round one or round two, you know, a perfect hockey series, I don't think there will be a better hockey series than if Winnipeg and San Jose play each other. Just two physically dominant teams. Uh, I like your bet on the regulation. Uh, Alex, what do you think in this game? Only thing I would look at here would be the over. I mean, that's cashed in spades, 16 of the last 23 for the with the LA Kings. Uh, I mean, you know, we've seen Winnipeg. Yeah, their offense kind of spurt at times and, and uh, you know, taper off. But more often than not, they're going to get their goals. And as Andrew mentioned, they've got some depth uh, that can score. They don't need the top guys to score every single night, which, thank God, because Patrick Lyon, the slump that he went through, uh, this team would be in a world of trouble if they didn't have those, those secondary scores. So uh, at six with a, a decent price, I would look at the over. Uh, the Vegas uh, Golden Knights on the road tonight, they're uh, at 85 points. It's going to be tough for them to fall out of uh, the playoffs, but it is possible. They're, uh, they're playing the San Jose Sharks. I think the Sharks team is amazing. Uh, but Vegas has just been on an absolute tear. Uh, they've won their last two games against Edmonton and Dallas. They lost to Calgary but they've won eight of their last nine hockey games. Uh, with that said, they did get to play Vancouver twice and Anaheim once and Florida once in that time span. Uh, San Jose, though, come back down to earth a little bit. Won six in a row and then lost to Florida and Nashville. And the bottom line here is I really wouldn't want to be Van uh, Vegas tonight. I think we're going to get a real solid effort from San Jose. Uh, they're minus 175. Uh, on the money line, minus one and a half, and plus 140 on the spread. And the over and under here is six and a half. And guys, for me, uh, and I know Vegas is playing really well, but getting the plus 140 with a potential empty netter uh, seems like where the value is. Uh, San Jose by two. Uh, Alex? Yeah, that's a that's a solid way to look at this game because I, I wouldn't touch this total. Obviously, Mark andre Fleury is out. So you got either Malcolm Subban or Maxime, like I say, uh, going in net. Uh, this is obviously an important game for both teams. San Jose is trying to win the Pacific Division. Vegas is trying to make sure they get enough points to stay away from dropping into that wild card yeah. spot. They want to keep that third spot uh, you know, in the Pacific, and they're going to play whoever drops out of the, the, the top of the division. They're going to play on the road. Uh, to start their playoff series. So it could possibly be uh, a playoff preview. And, of course, we saw these two teams play last year in the postseason. That was a great series. So uh, this could be a tough game. I, if I were to play anything, I would actually lean slightly with the under. I could see this possibly being a, a, a tighter game. Vegas, knowing that they don't have Flurry back there to, to make all the big saves, maybe they try to be a little yeah, more the, the careful. Pro with the problem with you know? the under, and, and I like it in, in theory, but Subban's a disaster. I'm 3.12. One, two uh, goals against, a save percentage of under nine. Uh, there's been some games that he's played where six went up. Yeah, and, and he let in a couple of soft goals uh, in your last night's game too. So that, that's a cause for concern. So, I, But San Jose, obviously a team that you cannot fade uh, at home. They've won 12 of the last 16. Like you said, uh, I would be looking at them uh, either regulation or puck line. Uh, Andrew? I think, I think we have to remember too, though, as terrible as starts at Super in his head sometimes he also never really gets that to use a baseball term run support goal support it seems that they always play better in front of flurry regardless of how Subban's playing or not he could be playing absolutely lights out but but, but andrew that makes total sense i mean i play hockey twice a week and i mean it makes total sense when we've got a bad goalie in net like if our goalie doesn't show up 
and we have a rent a goalie and he's a disaster. You know, the forwards are playing lower. Uh, the defense is is getting rid of the puck faster in our end. Uh, you know, we're blocking more shots, which uh, can potentially lead to deflections. You know, when we when and conversely, when we have a rent a goalie and we get sent an A goalie in a D league, I mean, we basically play a four one, uh, where it's like you want to shoot on our goalie, go right ahead, shoot all day. Where pick the spot and shoot, buddy. Yeah. It ain't going in. So it's not it's not like in baseball where Verlander doesn't get run support or whatever it might be. There is a direct correlation to how a team plays in front of a goalie based on the confidence they have in that goaltender. Um, I see it all the time, brother, and it makes logical sense. For sure. No, that's a great point, Prez. And you kind of segued me into my pick. I'm actually really comfortable and really strong with the over. For the longest time, I thought this San Jose team was meant to be an excellent defensive team, but they've really proven to be a faster team than... I thought they were. With guys like Vlasic, with guys like Burns, guys like Justin Braun, they move the puck forwards. And I get what you're saying. You know, with your experience playing hockey, you want to protect your own end. But when you've got defensemen always moving up into the rush, that could, you know, translate the other way for odd man rushes. And, you know, I'm, I'm not touching the side in this one because Superman's got to get a friggin' win at some point. So I think if he does, it will be high scoring. San Jose has been involved in a lot of high scoring games recently. I've had two cops of coffee today. I'm fired up. I'm taking the over in this one. Uh, he's Andrew. The other guy's Alex, and I'm the president. That, my friends, is uh, puck time for Monday. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. Both of these two schmoes will be on again with me. Uh, and make sure to watch Morning Joe and the Pro. It's Teddy and I. We look at some future bets in college hoops. Uh, and we also talk about how to bet the madness. And tomorrow... Morning, Joe and the Pro, me and Ralph. Uh, it's going to be a must-watch show, all uh, college nice. hoops again. Guys, thank you. Alex, thanks for covering sure. for me last week. I know you were sick on Friday, but thanks for covering on uh, on the Thursday. Be good, everyone. Thank right, you. Guys. See you.